I'm not grumpy and irascible, it's just my beard. Uh, feels like my 15th year being introduced by Katie Ferenbacher, who I love. And I want you all to notice K Katie's shoes. She always has the best shoes of anyone at any conference. Um, so this young woman is doing an incredible job calling it like it actually is, uh, telling us responsible adults that she'll be watching us with her generation. Um, my son actually drew me slides for this sh show that said fuck climate change. They were so explicit and fuck adults, et cetera, et cetera, that I couldn't put them up. So I have to use Greta Thunberg's PG version. Uh, but he represents the anger that you should be feeling from that generation. So we know this, the science is unrelenting. For more than a decade, we've had a thing called carbon budgeting, where you can reverse engineer from the climate outcome you want how much carbon you have left to spend. And that science is, was most clearly reduced in the IPCC 1.5 degree report. We got 10 years, we need to do 50-ish percent reductions to give us a 50% chance, which is terrible, of a one and a half degree world. I grew up swimming on the coral reefs of the Great Barrier Reef. We're gonna lose them above this, so I'm bitter and as bitter and angry. And maybe I am angry and irascible, like she said. Um, but that's not even the full story. It's actually worse than is presented. There is a concept called committed emissions. This is the emissions that we've already committed by virtue of having fossil fuel using machinery and generating machinery in action. So if we don't build a single new internal combustion engine car, if we don't build a single new power plant that burns fossil fuels, uh, if every furnace bought starting tomorrow is a heat electric heat pump, we still commit more than enough carbon dioxide to take us over one and a half degrees and probably up near two. So that really means we have zero years. There is no time left. And I think, thank you. Uh, I think the worst headline that we actually, it was meant to be a good headline, but you know, bad climate communications is this, we have 11 years concept. It is zero or less than zero. These are adoption curves for all of the technologies we have in our home over the 20th century, from the car to the color TV to the microwave to the radio. Um, normal adoption curves look like this. The market starts slowly. It takes a little while to get 1% market share. And then you'll get like 2% growth annually. And you'll grow and grow and grow until you're eventually 100%. That simply does not get us there to any world that you want to live in. Um, one of my heroes is right in front of me, which is great, Holmes Hummel. <laughs> Good to see you. <clears throat> so she'll probably nod. We need adoption curves like this on everything now. So we need 100% adoption of the correct carbonless technology at every purchasing decision starting this year. So it means every new car needs to be electric. Every heating system and HVAC system needs to be heat pump driven. It means every generating and uh, every piece of generating capacity needs to be nuclear, wind, solar, or carbonless. So the consequences of this are a little awkward. It means that normal market rules simply can't apply. It is too late for a carbon tax. A carbon tax slowly influences the adoption curves. A carbon tax was a tremendous idea 20 years ago. It's probably still a good idea for playing at the margins, but it simply doesn't get you where you want to go. Uh, I really love the communication of John Kerry at the moment. I think World War Zero is really uh, the simplest way to say this. Why? Because it has to be a war effort. And despite the fact that I just told you that normal market rules can't apply, um, you might think America is really good at free markets, but actually America is the best in the world at sort of free markets. And you did it many times during the 20th century. Right? You did the New Deal, uh, which was basically a democratic way to escape, a uh, democratic style economics way to escape the Great Depression. You did Democracy's Arsenal, which was a Republican-ish way to leverage American industry to build all of the war materials for World War II. Manhattan Project, Apollo Program were bipartisan, heroic science projects. We need, realistically, to do all of those simultaneously to have any chance of staying under two degrees or being close to one and a half. So you really, the New Deal analog is public infrastructure, so the rebuilding of transmission lines, charging stations, 
our generation infrastructure. Democracy's arsenal, democracy's arsenal analog is gearing up American industry to build all those electric vehicles. I think we need roughly 90 billion batteries per year to electrify the fleet by 2035. To put that in perspective, the world makes 90 billion bullets per year currently, so we can shoot each other 11 times per year. Uh, but we, we need to do that sort of manufacturing scale for batteries. We need, for the material economy, a Manhattan Project. We don't know how to decarbonize all the edges of the material economy, the cement, the steel, the aluminum, uh, new refrigerants, etc. We need a Marshall Plan for scaling globally, and I think that should be led by America. And we need an Apollo program for carbon removal. It's most likely going to be tree, tree planting and sequestering carbon in the material economy more so than uh, direct air sequestration, but we need to do all of these things. In the 70s, we were capable of more bipartisan technocratic thinking in response to the oil crisis that led to these sort of lines of gas lines. Nixon created the Department of Energy, the EPA, and the Energy Information Administration. That was the first time we could look at energy flows in the US and understand the problem. The problem in 1976 was the very bottom left-hand corner of that. It says imports. 15 quads of energy was in imports. And the way to solve the American energy problem in 1976, conceivably, was efficiency. We could efficiency our way to a solution with better appliance standards, better automo automotive uh, efficiency standards, and more efficient fleets. You look today, this is the 2018 version of that chart. It really hasn't changed, unfortunately. Um, but we just did a project with the Department of Energy to look at if we can take all of the data, look at everything that is possible in the American economy at the highest resolution possible, how does all of that energy flow? And then once you have all of that data, you can do some interesting experiments. So you can run the, what if we electrify everything strategy? And this is the electrify everything strategy. I'll let you go online and have a look at these later, but I'll just sort of narrate, because obviously the words are too small. But if you merely electrified all of our automotive fleet, uh, did carbonless generation for all of our thermoelectrics, do LEDs, do heat pumps for all of our heating, and then you remove the roughly 9 or 10% of our energy, which is currently used to mine, refine, and transport fuels, you could give America exactly the lifestyle it has today with less than half the energy. That's a much more saleable headline than efficiency and sacrifice for the win. So electrification is efficiency, right? We need to have not a 1970s efficiency-based mindset. We need to have a 2020, 2030 substitution. We, at this point, we can only afford to do substitution technologies that are better. All right, so the three big things that you care about, electrify transport, electrify heat, and decarbonize electricity, and just say that as a mantra to everyone you meet. The thousand little things, and I believe, oh, they came up pretty quick. Anything there that has a number like 0.1 next to it, that's the amount of energy for that tiny little piece of the economy, that's probably a $25 billion opportunity for decarbonizing. So there are a thousand little opportunities, and we can now see them. This is what Every one of you in your organization is probably affecting one of these tiny little flows. Don't think about how to be more efficient. Think about the complete substitution of carbonless technologies to achieve that, uh, the products and the end goals of that piece of the economy. All right, some crazy big ideas. When, when, uh, when we went to war with Roosevelt in World War II, he asked some guys called Knudsen and others from Detroit to figure out how to get American industry to make all of our war materials. I see the presidential candidates standing up there and mouthing words about big plans, but I think they're sort of stumbling. I don't think they yet believe themselves that we can do it. I think it is our responsibility. We should basically do the job of nuds in ourselves, and we need to pre-commit as a collection of industries that we will transform our industries to do these jobs. I think we need that level of commitment from industry to help the politics get over the line. Here's a crazy idea. Everyone's, thank you. We should start that association today. Um, somebody who's better at organizing organizations than me should start the American Industrial Coalition to support getting to zero carbon. Um, 
I think we need to forgive fossil fuels. Here's the crazy idea. We are demonizing them right now. We are getting the fossil fuel industry sort of backed into a corner. And honestly, the most people in this country who know how to build infrastructure at scale are in the fossil fuel industry. The crazy idea is you have the US government buy out their proven reserves at their marginal profit, which is actually not a very large number. And then you basically capitalize that company, those companies to be the most heavily, heavily capitalized companies in the world to actually go and deploy the new infrastructure. I think unless we have an idea like that that is bipartisan, we ha there has to be a grand compromise. It maybe rhymes with this idea. The other big idea is finance, finance, finance. Um, if you squint and look around the world, we have arrived at a future where we can solve climate change with an interest rate. What do I mean by that? Um, in Australia, the cost of solar is essentially six or seven cents a kilowatt hour when it's produced on your roof. Germany, because it had expensive Russian natural gas for the last 30 years, has the heat pump technology to, to transform our HVAC systems. And California, if you squint at it, basically has the right set of policies to make electric cars cost effective. If I could finance a package of those three things at the type of uh, infrastructure interest rates we give to utilities, I would save every home in America about $2,000 a year. So we are there, but we don't have a financial instrument that packages up that. Here's something that I hate to say because I build startups. We have no time for startups. It took Tesla 20 years to get to single digit percents. Um, these are startups that I'm doing. If you're an industry that does any one of these things, come and see me. We now, startups need to work with big companies to get to scale on time. It's World War Zero. How dare do we not do it? Stand with the children. Thank you.